do you know no matter what challenge you're facing and no matter how tough your life is there are people who would desperately want to be in your place come thank Allah why is it we all complain yes we do have challenges have faith have faith life is all about being tested you need to understand this and if you choose to be a Muslim, well Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from you that if you become a Muslim, then you accept, you accept Islam completely. You don't pick and choose what you want from the deen. There's no compulsion in religion. There's no forcing anyone to be a Muslim. Today, even the day I speak, our job is to make the whole world Muslim. Habibi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it very clear to the Prophet of Allah. You can't guide who you want, we guide who we want. My job and your job as a Muslim is to convey the message. We believe in miracles. Something impossible is not impossible for Allah. How many times have things that are totally impossible happened because Allah willed them? Things that man said this, there is no chance that this would happen. And it came and it happened and it was. Subhanallah, that's Allah. The road to Jannah is paved with hardship. It's paved with struggle. It's paved with trials, difficulties, afflictions suffering why because once you walk your two feet into those gates you'll forget about that long road you'll forget about all those struggles all that hardship all that difficulty all that testing all that pain all that affliction all those depressed days and depressed nights it'll be all gone you'll rest forever for eternity but no matter how easy that road is to Jahannam, no matter how many f desires you fulfilled in your life, no matter how good it's made you feel, the moment you are tossed through its gates, you will wish with everything that is in you, you would have struggled a little bit more. The day of Arafah is the best day of the entire year. On that day, what should you be doing? You need to know it's the day, according to the hadith in Sahih Muslim, that Allah frees the maximum number, the most people from hellfire. So he writes names of people who are free from hellfire because of some good that they did. So do good throughout the season. You know, in the nights, the nights of Ramadan, there are a lot of people who are free from hellfire. But during the day, the day, this is the day, the day of Arafah, subhanAllah, the ninth of Dhul Hijjah. So, subhanAllah, we must ask Allah to free us from hellfire. It's something known as the names of Allah. Allah has many names, many qualities. Why so many names and qualities? Because each one of them will teach you something about the power of your maker and who exactly he is. So you will hear how forgiving he is, how merciful he is, etc, etc. All this is beautiful because it connects you to him. That will bring about happiness. Indeed, there are sins just between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that nobody knows about. If you want Allah to forgive you, then be someone who's ready to forgive others. How many siblings are we not speaking to? Forget about others. Some of us are not even talking to our parents. We are not speaking to our parents, my brothers and my sisters, because we feel like they've wronged us. It is conditional to you forgiving others if you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. When you pray for someone, the first bonus that you receive, the angels begin to say, Oh Allah, grant this person better than what they're asking for that person. Wow, subhanAllah. So I say, Oh Allah, bless that man. The angels are saying, Oh Allah, give him too, or give her too. And when the angels pray for you, tell me which prayer is better, yours or the angels? It's quite simple. So if you really want the angels to pray for you, keep praying for other people. On this particular day of Eid and prior to Eid, the fine detail going even to the meetings you are planning on the day of Eid, as well as the clothing you are planning to wear and so much more, you need to make sure it's all in the pleasure of Allah and not in the displeasure of Allah. If Allah has given you a happy day, make Allah happy at least. Allah will be happy. But Allah's giving you a happy day and you're making shaitan happy because you know shaitan is also waiting to come out, mashallah. May Allah forgive us. In these nights, I want you to ask Allah Azza wa Jal the impossible. 
tell yourself, the one who gave Zakaria alayhi salam a baby can solve my problems. The one who gave Yaqub his sight back can solve my problems. The one who turned the fire into coolness with Ibrahim alayhi salam can solve my issues. Ask Allah the impossible. Remember that he subhanahu wa ta'ala said, huwa alayya hayyin. It is very easy for me. Have that in the back of your mind when you're raising your hands in these blessed nights. Because sometimes when we are asking Allah, we think that we are asking one another. And we say to ourselves, how could this be solved? It's impossible. No, don't worry about the how. Do not worry about the how. Get busy by asking. How is from Allah, from the Qadir, from the Azim, from the Hakim, from the one who named himself Al-Mujib. The one who answers the dua. Allahi, any religion, any system, any sect, any way of life, if any one of these things was attacked like the way Islam is being attacked, Wallahi, it would have collapsed ages ago. Yet Islam is still here, it is still standing, it is still flourishing. You are a Muslim and Allah is waiting for you. The angels are waiting for you. The Ummah is waiting for you to wake up and come back to Allah. Listen to this carefully. There are going to be young people who Allah puts love of Islam in their hearts. And doesn't matter if they've been partying their whole life and they don't know anything about Islam, one day they're gonna wake up and say, I wanna be a better Muslim. And they're gonna start praying. And the girl's gonna start dressing better. And the guy's gonna start learning to recite Quran. They're gonna wanna learn their religion. These young people, not because of their parents, not because of anything else, something Allah put in their heart, and they're gonna wanna learn their religion. Your problem, your calamity, the issues you have with people, or whatever it may be, in terms of negativity, it must bring you closer to Allah. Allah says, bear patience, the promise of Allah is the truth. The solution to all of your problems is our deen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم. Today your, your religion has been completed and perfected. Any problem, any trial, any tribulation, any hardship that you ever face in your life, you will find the full answer in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You want answers? Come to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah has made a need in your life, it's because He loves you. Because he wants you to cry to him. That's the reason. Never take supplication out of the equation. No matter what it is, always make dua. Call out to Allah. Keep on calling out to Allah. You're thinking too much. Your iman is weak. That's why you are suffering. You're, when your iman is weak, you know what happens? You start thinking, what's going to happen to me, my future? You stop worrying in that way. Worrying never solves a problem. Trust me, lay your trust in Allah. Do what you can in your capacity. Go out and try as hard as you can. Never ever leave any stone unturned when it comes to your effort and leave the rest in the hands of Allah. Don't ever walk past an individual brother and sister thinking that you are better than them. No matter how much of knowledge you have acquired. Wallahi, you don't know, he might have a secret act just between him and Allah Azza wa And nobody knows about it. The saying goes, there's many people that are unknown on the earth, but they are known to Allah. You know, I, I'm not a good person, I know that. Why did you already, Allah hasn't passed judgment on you yet? Why have you passed judgment on yourself? Why did you pass that verdict on yourself? Well, you know, I've done a lot of mistakes, or I... Uh, I, I know Allah is very angry with me. Really? You know Allah is very angry with you. Did you receive an email? Did you receive some kind of com communication directly from Allah that Allah is angry with you? You know what it is? People keep telling you Allah is angry with you and you start believing people as though they have some direct channel with Allah. They don't. They don't. People's opinion of you is not Allah's opinion of you. There's a difference between those things. But you start accepting that about yourself and you lose hope and become disconnected.